Yo, good morning everybody. From Invercargill, the most southern city in New Zealand. Yeah, we took a two and a half hour drive this morning from Queenstown after a couple of awesome days and we've made it over to the city which we've never been to before. Yeah, it's our first time here. We're excited to check out what is around. We've got another beautiful day. Yeah, and that Lucky is us. the older uh, water tower right behind us. We're gonna give you guys a little bit of a history about that one first and then we're gonna get something to eat. Definitely need some food. <laughs> Let's go check out this tower. All right. We wanted to make a quick stop off to check out this tower because it looked like an iconic landmark here in Invercargill. Read that it was open in 1889 and the tank that's atop of the tower was the first supply of high pressurized water to Invercargill city. According to this plaque. Yeah. We have driven our way through the town center and we found our stop, the pig station. I'm looking forward to getting myself maybe like a pork belly roll or something like that. Yeah, luckily it's still open. Yeah, it was quite hard finding a place that was open, but this is where we wanted to eat anyway. And we got some, the namesake, pig right up front. <laughs> I don't know why, but I had a massive craving for pork belly sandwich and look at this beauty right over here. Now when they said pork belly sandwich, I don't expect the pork belly to be like this thick. <laughs> look at this thing. That looks amazing. Oh, and because it's Thursday, we get some free sides. Yeah, free fries. Hot chips. Mm. Oh. I seem very satisfied. Oh wow. <laughs> Oh, that just melts my heart strings right over there. I, literally, the pork was melting in my mouth. It is so good. I think it's the caramelized onion sauce that you've got in there, mixed in with these um, apple salad that's also mixed throughout on the bottom. And then you've got the mayo, and then most importantly, that pork belly has been cooked so well. It is super soft, it is super juicy and succulent. You're making me very hungry. Oh, man. That's delicious. I went and got the Oreo Pukki pulled pork. So because this place is called Pig Station, we decided we had to get pork dishes. <laughs> Think it makes sense. Eh? Yeah, definitely. Let's have a try of this one. I read that it's a homemade barbecue sauce. It's really like so good. Look at the inside. Wow, look at all that good stuff. Looks like I've got the same apple coleslaw as Peter. It's just dripping. That is really, really delicious. It's got so much of the sweetness and the tanginess coming through. Really yum. Thank you, the pig station. That meal was delicious. It really was. And also thank you to Terry who works inside there. She gave us a whole bunch of great local tips. Like, uh, what was it? Transport, Transport World, 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 which we're, we're going, going tomorrow. Visit. Yes, sounds good. But right now we're going over to Queen's Park. Yeah, we're just going to go for a little walk around before we head back to our Airbnb. Yeah, something we noticed when we were driving through is that it's quite um, vast. It's very widespread and we noticed quite a few different parks. So Queen's Park, here we come. <laughs> We've been walking around the park for a little while now. We found the winter garden. It's nice and humid in here because it's getting a little chillier outside, but still a gorgeous day. What do you think of this place over there? This place is awesome, man. I didn't expect it to be so big. Yeah, it's apparently 80 hectares and it sprawls all these beautifully kept gardens. It's a public park too, which is great. So you can just enjoy walking around. It's really good that we're having a way more chilled out day compared to what we're oh, yeah. doing. I think our muscles needed a rest. It surely did. Uh, I saw that there's a Japanese garden as well, so it'd be nice to go check that out. I want to see the aviary. So we made our way over to the aviary and this is such a cool little spot. We can actually go inside this one and see all the different birds. So far I've spotted White doves right behind me over there, some lorikeet, some parakeet, and some other birds, which I'm not quite sure what the species are. <laughs> 
looks like you found your Japanese garden, eh, bud? We sure did. It's a little miniature one and you can't actually go inside. It's just for viewing, but it's a cool little spot just to chill out. I was doing a bit of reading about the park too. And it sounds like there's an extensive sporting facilities here. There's an 18 hole golf course, disc golf, there's cricket grounds. I think I read something about a tennis court, maybe croquet, I can't quite remember. <laughs> that's, that's why like Kiwis are so good at sports, eh? Must be, there's just such easy access to all this. Oh, what? They've even got some wallabies over here. Did you expect that, bud? No, that's so cute. It's just like licking its little hands. It's adorable. There's even some peacocks. There's a white one, a colorful one there, black one on that side, and some pigs. <laughs> and some llamas. llamas. You love llamas. <laughs> I think this gazebo marks the center point of this park. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, we didn't get to check out the entire place because this area is so massive. But from what we did see, in Invercargill, you should be proud because you guys have a beautiful maintained park. There's so much tranquility and serenity right now. Yeah. Ooh, it looks like a great spot. Any second, I'm just gonna take off my shoes. Yeah, so this is Peter and Karen's Airbnb. And it's a newly renovated place. It's very clean, modern, stylish. Has tables for us, which is super handy since we need to do our work too. I guess the bedroom must be on this side. Yeah, ooh, lovely. Looks like a very comfy bed. Wow, is this layout is nice, eh? Yeah, it is. It's really cool. It's very private and lots of space for us. A well-equipped kitchenette with a couple of treats too. That's so nice. Got a little mini fridge, even a tiny dishwasher, microwave. Very handy. Bathroom will be this side. Super clean, so I always love that. And a washing machine dryer, which is going to be handy for us. Oh yes, we're here for a couple of nights, so we that are. is going to be super useful. Yeah, three nights. Oh, and there's a heat pump. That's going to be great for me. This place was $366 for the three nights that we're staying here. And I think we're going to wrap things up now and we will continue tomorrow where we head over to Transport World. Yeah, it's going to be cool. <laughs> we'll see you then. Good morning everyone! Morning. So we've just time jumped two days in the terms of how you're watching this because yesterday we actually ended up going to Stewart Island to take advantage of the clear weather forecast yeah, and, and it's raining today, which is perfect. So glad we did. Because <laughs> um, the things that we're going to be doing are indoors anyway. Yeah, so we figured before we go to Transport World, we're going to stop off at this place called e -Hays. Yeah. Peter found something really interesting here. It's so cool. It's a hardware store, but not like you know a hardware store. So we're <laughs> just going to go inside in a sec now. You'll see why soon. This is a massive department store. You're going to be able to get all kinds of hardware as well as homeware, but we're here actually for something a little bit different. Amongst all that stuff, you'll find a whole bunch of vintage motorcycles as well as vintage cars. And if you guys remember, a couple of years back, there was a movie called The World's Fastest Indian starring Anthony Hopkins. That's actually about Burt Monroe, a Kiwi that spent about 20 years converting this 1920s Indian scout and turned it into the world's land speed breaking record motorcycle for under 1,000 cc's, which was achieved at the Utah Salt Flats. Burt was actually 68 years old when he managed to do that. That's amazing. Yeah, and this is the original motorcycle. So how cool is that, that this is actually still here in Invercargill, New Zealand, where he did a lot of his work during that time. Bert was friends with Neville and also Norman yeah. Hayes. Yeah. And so like, now this thing is enshrined here in the Southland. Southland <laughs> history forever. So this is the actual engine. Yeah. And, and then this is, is the shell, but the it's shell. A, one of the replicas. Yeah, and if I turn you around this side, you can actually get into this shell. <laughs> How cool is that that you get to get into this thing and sit in the actual replica? If you're in Invercargill, you definitely have to check this place out. It's free as well. You can give a gold coin donation. And also a shout out to Pat who is sharing so much of um, his knowledge about these bikes. He is super knowledgeable. <laughs> I 
final destination here in Invercargill. We are at Bill Richardson's Transport World. And uh, the prices here are $35 per person. And we've got our tickets. We're ready to head on in. It seems like it's going to be a massive place. Yeah, excited. <laughs> a lot of ground to cover. What have you found? This is a 1910 Ford Model T. I'm no car expert or anything like that and someone leave a comment down below if this is wrong but I think this was the first commercially produced vehicle in the world. Ooh. Yeah, which is pretty cool, right? This place is way bigger than um, what I imagined because yeah. when we came in here, it's like actually gigantic and that makes sense because this is the largest private automotive museum of its type in the world. This probably would have been my favorite section, the R34 JDM car. But it's gone! <laughs> At least they have an R35 here and an R33. As someone who's not really into cars all that much, this place is still cool just to appreciate the prettiness <laughs> of all these motor vehicles. We're in the mini section and as Peter was saying, this place is massive. We're only in the first shed so far. They have more than cars too. The lady in the front was saying that there's also wedding gowns and the largest collection of Happy Meal toys, I believe too. <laughs> so we're gonna eventually hit all those things. There's about 350 motor vehicles and around about 200 vintage petrol pumps. We've seen a couple of them so far. It's quite amazing to see this collection though because it is huge and they're all just packed in these different warehouses and sheds. I think if you're a car enthusiast, then Invercargill's your city, eh? Well, you can't spell Invercargill without car. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever seen so many Happy Meal toys before? Never. <laughs> Do anyone else collect McDonald's Happy Meal toys? Apparently this is New Zealand's largest collection of them and there are tons. I recognize a couple of these though, but I don't know if that um, kind of gives my age away. <laughs> <laughs> We've reached the end of Bill Richardson's transport world. It is amazing to think that this whole place started thanks to his collection and then his family transformed it into all of this. Yeah, I gotta do a shout out to Rob Holnui. Uh, he and I talk about um, cars sometimes and he's a big supporter of the channel. So I hope you Rob. enjoyed it, bro. <laughs> and if you guys enjoyed following us around in Chicago, we hope you will give us those thumbs up, drop us a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. That all helps our channel, so we really appreciate it. Yeah, we'll catch you on next week's video, which is gonna be from Stewart, Stewart Island. Island. We'll see you guys there. <laughs> see ya. Bye.